traditional development thinking had led us to hope that growth would lead to employment, productivity gains um, among the poor, and that this, in this way, employment would lead to a reduction in poverty globally. But what we're seeing is that the labour market isn't functioning the way we'd hoped that it would do, and that we have persistent unemployment and also underemployment. Four-fifths of workers in developing countries are experiencing vulnerable employment. And if we look in, in developing countries, two-thirds of workers are living below the poverty line. And this situation isn't improving over time. What we're seeing is that economic growth is occurring alongside growth in the absolute numbers of working poor, growth in the absolute numbers of the unemployed. What this means is that we need to have a rethinking of social protection. So clearly we need to be thinking about the linkages between social protection provision and how we address the needs of this huge army of people who are underemployed and unemployed. this South-South Knowledge Collaboration on designing and implementing social protection programs for employment. Welcome everyone, um, distinguished guests from the Philippines government, German governments, representatives from all of the other countries representative, uh, multilateral organizations, non-government organizations, um, and you social protection practitioners. Social protection can protect people against life cycle risks and prevent poverty. At the same time, it can promote pro-poor growth by strengthening the productivity and propensity to invest to the deprived population. Magandang umaga. The Philippines, through the Department of Social Welfare and Development, is honored to co-host the South to South Knowledge Collaboration event. We always welcome the opportunity to learn from others as well as to share our own experiences in relation to addressing issues of poverty, this is one opportunity. And uh, there are 19 countries and 19 experiences no, to learn from, aside from the fact that we have our partners here uh, from ADB, UNICEF, World Bank, and Poverty Action. And of course, our regular partners from Australia. From the very beginning, the Australian Embassy has been a consistent and reliable partner in the, the department's uh, work. So thank you again. Uh, and also GTZ. GTZ, uh, I have worked with GTZ before when I was uh, with the women's NGO a long time ago when I was uh, young and beautiful. <laughs> now, as they said, now I'm just beautiful. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I am also happy to see members of the department here, the DSWD, uh, both uh, to share uh, our experiences, our insights, as well as, I am sure, learn from your experiences and insights. Again, welcome. Social protection and employment is a complex topic, and we're not going to get all of the answers over the next four days. Um, while we hopefully will get some, it's really important that we frame this event as just one piece in a puzzle with SPEC being a way to deepen our understanding of some of the other pieces in this puzzle. SPEC provides an ongoing platform for engaging with others and so we've had webinars um, from the Philippines, from Bangladesh, from Chile. Basically what you have to do, you go to socialprotection.org, what you have to do is click connect all right, and you see there's the online communities over there, and then you search for SPAC, a social protection for employment community. Very catchy. Since 2002, RAC started their targeting the ultra poor program, which now covers. 1.7 million households. Now the model is simple. It's based on a recognition that poor people face a range of different vulnerabilities. And so the response they figured 
have to also be multidimensional. So the combined cash assistance for consumption, which we all do through our conditional and unconditional transfers, but with that, they added in a livelihoods component, recognizing that it was important for people while they were in this cash assistance to start thinking of a business plan, thinking of self-employment as a strategy. But then most of these micro-businesses need seed capital to start with. It is a program which aims to develop capacities in order to allow households to uh, be integrated into the market. The program has four components. The first one seeks to strengthen the production systems of the families. It is a program addressed to rural families, most of them working on agriculture. The second component is to promote uh, rural entrepreneurship. Then we have a third component, which is related to the promotion of healthy households. And through it, families receive training to improve the preparation of nutritious food access to safe water, uh, and efficient solid waste management. The fourth component is related to financial education. How intensive is the Chachik's role? Is it really intensive or just a high level of monitoring? The Chachik is usually a farmer from the community, either from the same community as the group that he's going to relate with, or from a very nearby community. They are agricultural producers which have some uh, leadership characteristics and they are trained. You know, they, they, they are trained so that they can use their own uh, knowledge, which is usually indigenous based knowledge, to transmit it in a better way. Ahora sí, ¿qué es empleo para la prosperidad? Entonces, el objetivo de nuestro programa es facilitar la inserción al mercado laboral de la población sujeto de atención por prosperidad social. El programa eh, tiene, digamos, cuatro... Ok, el programa tiene cuatro líneas de atención. Primero tenemos una línea de formación técnica y complementaria que obedece, por supuesto, a los perfiles de la población que encontramos en el mercado laboral. Tenemos una línea de fortalecimiento en competencias transversales y acompañamiento psicosocial. En la otra línea que tenemos es una línea de apoyos complementarios. Eh, también tenemos personas que no llegan a los procesos de formación porque no tienen los recursos para desplazarse. Entonces, nuestro programa garantiza, eh, o depende de la ciudad, si es pequeña y es viable organizar, garantiza el transporte. Es decir, lo recoge en un punto que se identifica, lo lleva al centro y luego lo regresa. Y la cuarta línea del programa es el tema de la vinculación laboral. the Micro Enterprise Development Rock, uh, we have three um, modes of assistance. One is, one is cost for building livelihood assets, or we call it CBLA, and another one is technical and vocational, or vocational skills training, and the third one is seed capital fund. And then for the employment facilitation track, there are two uh, <laughs> assistance provided. This is the skills training, the employment assistance fund, and they can use this um, fund for um, a securing employment uh, documents. Uh, how long do you find the hand-holding process uh, should go on? Two years, and then we let them go. We let them go in such a way that 
if they if we think that through themselves they, they are empowered enough to be soft reliant and could access for other uh, uh, programs and services from other agencies they can do it themselves or our um, if there's a need for the um, uh, facilitation of our uh, field implementers then our field implementers will do that that's how we design it with the new manual the sustainability stage Once again, a uh, very pleasant morning to each and every one of you who are here, yes, at our uh, municipality. Right, right. And almost the Go ahead. Ate, Billy, Bishari, Pantawid. 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 Ilang anak meron ka? So, she has four kids. de seguridad y oportunidades plantea que es súper relevante para poder superar la vulnerabilidad la acción concertada de los distintos servicios del Estado. Por tanto, hace un énfasis en lo que es intersectorial y que es la coordinación de los distintos servicios del Estado para poder abordar población objetivo y poder concentrar intervenciones. Un eh, elemento central del programa familia, que es el componente que el FOSIS tiene a cargo, es que este, este programa tiene como objetivo fundamentalmente fortalecer las capacidades de desenvolvimiento autónomo de las familias y facilitar su relación con la estructura de oportunidades. ¿Eh? Entonces tiene dos elementos centrales. Uno que está relacionado con las propias familias y generar capacidades y fortalecer habilidades, y otro que tiene que ver con movilizar oferta del Estado en relación a los requerimientos y a las necesidades que tienen las familias. So what we have been develop developing are institutions like For example, the Coneval, which is a very strong uh, institution in Mexico, which is the autonomous, autonomous Institute for Evaluation. So this, this institute is in charge of evaluating how the programs are being implemented, implemented and it's also in charge of measure, measuring poverty. Originally, the design was to create social capital, and in that it was integrated education. So the scholarships were created to continue education and try to reach the next level of, of education. But of course, uh, then there was the question, well, maybe not everybody will want to study at the university level. Or then there's a the problem of employment absor absorption, right? So we started exploring the possibility of, instead of giving a scholarship for a university, giving a scholarship for training. Es así entonces como este programa se dedica a tres cosas fundamentales. Eh, motivar el acceso a la educación, ¿sí? disminuir la deserción en la educación superior, permitir que los jóvenes permanezcan y culminen la educación superior y fortalecer las habilidades blandas o habilidades para la vida. Nuestra población está compuesta por jóvenes eh, que pertenecen a diferentes grupos vulnerables eh, de Colombia, víctimas por desplazamiento, por temas de violencia, la población en situación de pobreza extrema, la población indígena y eh, los hijos del Estado, jóvenes o niños que han sido abandonados por sus padres que no tienen eh, pues, parientes que los acojan. Tenemos dos componentes, el componente de formación, que es todo lo que tiene que ver con las academias, con 
toda la formación técnica, tecnológica y universitaria y el componente de habilidades para la vida, eh, que ya pues, se los mencioné, lo que hacemos allí. Manrigo's beauty, or rather the strength is, it is backed by a legislation of the parliament. Now, what is this program about? Program talks of four things. One is, of course, wage employment, right? Number two is creation of durable assets. Number three is proactive social inclusion. And in from any household, if any adult person, 18 years and above, there is no age limit. Even a 70-year-old can come and demand work, and the government is bound to provide work. So who will monitor uh, and validate the work done by, by the people uh, after the work has been done? Yes. See, uh, we have technical personnel in large number, technical people in large number. They are all diploma holders or they are degree holders and out of my 6% administrative costs, they are engaged. Okay, they are not government, of, many of them are not government officials, they are on contract basis from the open market. So there should be, for every 2,500 active job cards, there should be one technical person that is a thumb Am I clear? Yeah. yeah. So these people are supposed to plan on the ground, help the people in planning, help the people. What kind of works? I mean, illiterate people are there. So what kind of works are supposed to be done? So we are going to guide, and then the layout is given when a work is done. Suppose a road has to be laid. So the person will come and just give the layout of the road, my technical personnel. Then measurement is done at the end of the show. Our objective for the EPWP in this expanded public works program, that is to provide work opportunities and income support to poor and unemployed people through labor intensity delivery of public and community assets and services and thereby contributing to development. Eligibility, we see ourselves as the employer of last resort. We, our target groups, obviously, uh, the, often the lowly skilled and poorly skilled and, uh, 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 and unemployed people. Our target is to create six million work opportunities over five years, and that's up to March 2019. Do you have uh, like evidence? Do you have a make an evaluation? Do you, do you have regular monitoring in monitoring those things, you know, dir directly rega in, with regards to poverty reduction? Because you said one of the, the goal of, uh, of the program is to reduce poverty. Various of our, uh, our evaluation studies, previous one was in 2015. 2015. We are busy with a big one now. We were always circumspect not to claim that public employment programs will alleviate, what will do two things, will um, solve the unemployment problem or will alle uh, uh, alleviate poverty directly. What we are claiming our objective we should be able to measure indeed whether we are doing it. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, in terms yeah. of program implementation. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why we said we make a contribution, we strive to make a contribution towards the following and, and that's what we have done. I have learned a lot from these uh, participants. Um, during the Tribune Committee, I, had, uh, I was actually amazed by the, uh, the will of the lady, uh, ladies there who participate in the program. It's a privilege for the DSWD to actually host this event. It's really a privilege for us to be able to share um, what the program is, what we do, what the program can still do. For the key insights that we picked up from this, first of all, something that the other countries emphasized, whether explicitly or implicitly, is the value of community organizing. Now this particular four days workshop, South-South Knowledge Collaboration, has been extremely relevant and useful for us. I find it very, very useful because we are at a time that we are uh, redesigning or improving the design of our development policy. 
in order to achieve a better linkage between social protection and sustainable livelihoods. I think this gathering is extremely useful, especially because it is a south-south um, knowledge sharing opportunity. Coming from Peru, I usually network and exchange knowledge with colleagues from my region, which is in Latin America, and the opportunity to meet uh, policy makers from Asia or from Africa or o Oceania is not that common. Atma Gandhi Narega talks of 100 days of wage employment, but listening to all the countries, I think it should be linked to livelihood. So why can't Narega graduate from 100 days of employment to 365 days of livelihood? So this is something which uh, I think we need to work on more closely. Uh, the next takeaway would be more focus on skilling. We have to skill the workers who come for the wage employment program back in India. And the last thing which I really learned here from Mexico was the need to set up the institutional structure for third party evaluation, autonomous structure, so we are going to work on it. What would be good is one, for us to have a comparative summary of all of the programs, just to see what has been laid out, identify challenges that are common, look at the strategies that each program and each country has identified in order to provide the solutions. The second one is to ensure that the networking um, among the participants is kept, is maintained, so that further discussions can ensue, provide other avenues, for example, webinars or um, an exchange of guidance notes immediately after so that people can still discuss. The most important insights I would like to take home from the event are those related to the different challenges that are faced worldwide regarding policy design, regarding policy implementation, regarding the importance of intersectoral coordination in order to achieve success, as well as the importance of taking context into account and trying to include community since the design processes in the policy making process. Perhaps the most important for us is not how successful we are in certain respects, but rather uh, what we can learn uh, from other countries to address the gaps in our own understanding and in, in terms of our own design and implementation problems. So what we see is programs that aim to exit people out of cash transfer programs and public works programs into the labour market are facing real challenges at the moment. Perhaps we need to be thinking about which new models are appropriate in this increasingly challenging labour market situation.